Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to put this over mm -hmm. here. Well, my first question, mm -hmm. obviously, you can talk a lot about the film, but mm -hmm. I, I wonder, as a film creator, the, the methods for produce this kind of film. But this one's, I don't know, it was a challenge or it wasn't a challenge? No, it was definitely a challenge. Um, you know, obviously movies this size are hugely challenging. And I think once we made the decision that we wanted to use all the tools in the toolbox, mm -hmm. we wanted a sense of reality. We didn't want to depend only on special effects, even though ILM's contribution mm -hmm. is huge. Um, we wanted to create real characters with fairly sophisticated robotics. We uh, had locations that we were shooting in. We had real sets we wanted to build. We used every single stage on the on the Pinewood lot. So it was a logistically complicated movie, no question. As a producer, what kind of decisions do you make for this film? <laughs> um, that you just, can talk, please. No, just about you know every decision imaginable. I mean, we have a fantastic team of people. I mean, the good news is I don't have to do this alone. <laughs> I have JJ, I had a co-producer, mm -hmm. Michelle Rejuan, who was fantastic. Um, wonderful contributions by Larry Kasdan, obviously, as our writer, along with JJ, Michael Arndt in the early days of constructing the look of the story, Rick Carter, who's our production designer, who just did a spectacular job in the early days of helping to create concept art that really inspired the story and the direction of the screenplay. And I'm not naming 99.9% of the amazing people that, that came on board, but that, that I, I approach it in that collaborative mm -hmm. way because movies are, they're all about corralling mm -hmm. ideas in service to a vision. And that's what you're trying to do is you, you, you need to as succinctly and as simply as possible identify the story you're telling and then put all your focus around servicing that vision because great movies at their core are simple and that's hard to do but if you're really going to deliver a story that is emotionally satisfying mm -hmm. then the characters need to be very clearly delineated the story needs to be very very clear mm -hmm. in order to deliver everything else around it is icing on the cake mm -hmm. but that that clear spine is what's always so difficult to, to achieve. How's and this does do that. How's the mechanic or your work? Because you are between genius. Mm. So JJ is the director, of course. Yes. He has the, I don't know, maybe the 95, 99% of the decisions. But you have in the other side, George Lucas. Mm -hmm. Who wants to work with those versions, with those kind? I don't know. Well, I, I think there's nothing better than to be working with hugely talented people, mm -hmm. and I've had the good fortune of working with a lot of them, whether it's um, George Lucas, J.J., Stephen, or even John Williams. Yeah. And I think, you know, the beauty of that is what you're trying to do is just provide the resources and the guidance to let them do what they do exceptionally well and recognize what that is. And, and I think, you know, the interesting thing is it doesn't matter how much of a genius or how talented somebody is, the boundaries that are created around that are also really important. I think almost every creative person will acknowledge that. So that's a, that's a bit of what the, the role of the producer is as well. They say editing is for the director the mm -hmm. most painful part. As a producer, is, is the same for you? I don't think George Lucas would say that. George Lucas started as an editor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that many directors recognize that editing is where the movie really comes together. Mm -hmm. So I don't know as it would be characterized as painful. Um, you know, I think everybody describes shooting a scene that they love that they have to put yes. on the cutting room floor because mm -hmm. it doesn't really service the story. But I think any director is going to see the value in the editorial process. Well, now with the new formats, Blu-ray, and the, they have special scenes for, or deleted scenes, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's very rare to I lose the scenes, I guess. I think it's very rare, though, that somebody looks at a Blu-ray and sees deleted scenes and doesn't agree that those yeah. scenes probably should have been deleted. Mm -hmm. that, that's true. <laughs> you know, it's rare when somebody complains that a movie's too short. <laughs> yeah, that's so. right. <laughs> that's right. Well, tell me, your first 
decision in this film? What it was? Your first decision. You say, my first decision from Star Wars was this. Who's writing? Who's writing? Who's writing? I, I think screenwriters are yeah. absolutely the <laughs> most valuable part of the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really, really need to identify who is going to be the screenwriter of the movie. In this case, we were very fortunate that J.J. is a screenwriter as well mm -hmm. as a director. Uh, that's a fantastic combination. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of Ryan Johnson coming into eight. Yeah. Um, even though Colin doesn't do that, he works with somebody mm -hmm. hand in hand on everything he does. So I, I knew that the most important thing for, for launching the entire franchise again was to make sure that we got this script right. The first script or more scripts? The first script. The first. I think you got to take baby steps, you know? Okay. And if, if I, I think I would have become paralyzed if I looked at everything mm -hmm. that needed to be done. I had to look at the, the first things that needed to be done. I also, simultaneously, I looked internally and I made very, very early decisions about who was going to run our development group because Lucasfilm had never had a development group. Yeah. And so I brought in a woman named Kiri Hart okay. right from the beginning who had worked with me for almost 15 years and I brought her in. I also brought my head of production in who had done Tintin with me mm -hmm. over in uh, uh, New Zealand. And those were the first two people I hired and brought into the company. I knew them well, I trusted them. And Kiri began to build the story department and Jason began to build the, the production department. And so my job was made much easier by having both of them, mm -hmm. two people I knew and, and trusted to be a part of building the infrastructure for how we would then move forward. And Kiri's done a phenomenal job in starting to put together the narrative structure that allowed us to know what Rebels mm -hmm. would be. It's allowed us to know what Battlefront was going to be inside the gaming area. She's worked very closely with what the theme parks mm -hmm. are planning to do. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, that narrative drive, that story, if mm -hmm. you will, so important to everything we do. That is huge, Catherine. Yeah. How, could you sleep? I sleep okay. Actually. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yes, of course. I, can you tell me? Yes, I know. Uh, pardon, I won't. Uh, can you? It's for me. Can you tell me how many treatments of so. the screen do you make? Well, we didn't really work that way. No. Because so many of us were sitting in a room with a whiteboard, uh -huh. and we were working off a structural outline for a long, First long act, time. First act, second act, block punch, yeah. and that kind and of then, stuff. And then um, JJ and Larry, when they began their process of, they, they talk a lot about the, the walking tours mm -hmm. of Santa Monica and Paris. They did a lot of writing in Paris. And it really came out of conversation. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's really nice. How the Star Wars will be, I don't know, growing? Do you see an end for the Star Wars? No, I'm glad I don't. Mm. Because I think the sense of infinity is fantastic. Yes. And I also believe that what we should do is our the story team should grow mm -hmm. over time. I mean, these stories in, in their own way and I think this was very important to George they somewhat reflect culture and society and politics and feelings emotions that tension between light and dark mm -hmm. is very much good and bad good and evil that's that's all a part of the DNA of Star Wars and the world is changing all the time yeah. so why shouldn't these stories and why shouldn't they reflect some of those sensibilities and so I love not knowing mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You make my my life so happy. And oh. my kids. So oh, well, great. Thank you. Great. Well, thank I think you, thank you're going to have a wonderful time. I spent the seven minutes yesterday. was I was crying with my brother. Oh, that's the, great. That, I'll listen with the millennial. Thank you that's very much. That's great. Gracias. Oh. Gracias. 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 Gracias.